Welcome, I'm Jacob Beningo, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up the STM32 F4 Discovery Board to use FreeRTOS. Now, one of the first steps that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to download STM32 CubeMX from ST Microelectronics website, and I'm also going to say download Atalix True Studio as the compiler for us to compile this and get it up and running. Those are going to be the two tool chains that I'm using. Now, one of the first things that we're going to do here, I'm going to fire up STM32 CubeMX. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to create a new project here. Now, one of the things that we can do once we have this new project wizard pop up, we have a choice to either select the microcontroller that we want. I can come in here and adjust these different settings to find the right microcontroller. But since I'm setting up the STM32 F4 discovery board, I can actually come over to the board selector tab, and then I can enter in the different parameters that I want to find my board. So for example, it's a discovery board. So a type of board is going to be discovery. And I already mentioned it's the STM32 F4. So once I click that, it filters in and provides me with the information that I need to find my part quickly. Now there's a couple of different discovery boards for this. I'm actually using a uh, the version that has the 407 VGT on board. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to select that board. Just double click on it. And then that's going to bring me to the configuration wizard. So I can come in here and I can adjust and set all the different pins that I want that are going to be on this particular microcontroller. Really all I want to do in this example is I want to blink a couple of LEDs using a free RTOS task. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do is realize that all the LED pins have already been set up for me by default. Because I use the board selector, it automatically configured the GPIO pin. So you can see over here on the right hand side, PD 15, 14, 13, and 12 have already been set up for LEDs. And you can see there's four of them, a blue, a red, an orange, and a green. So since that's already set up for me, all I need to worry about is configuring free RTOS. So I'm gonna come over here to the left hand side. You can see I'm under pinouts. I'm gonna expand in the middleware section I'm going to expand the free RTOS tab. You can see it's currently disabled. I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark. Free RTOS becomes green. It now means that it is enabled. Now, one of the things that's that you want to make sure you do when you enable free RTOS is you want to change your system tick timer where it's actually coming from. So if we come down into the system area here, we're going to expand this. And instead of using the system tick for my time base, I'm going to select one of the other timers. I, I personally, you, you know, you can look through here. You can see timer four and five are taken, timer eight's taken. I personally like to use timer six. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. You can see it was grayed out there. And at this point, I've gone through and I've essentially gotten things configured properly. I'm going to go ahead and save my project by going to File, Save Project As. It's going to bring up the window here. I'm going to select where I want to save it. In this particular case, I'm just going to store it on my desktop, create a new folder called Discovery RTOS. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click open and then save. Now this particular project file is going to be saved there, but I haven't actually generated any code yet. Now if I had wanted to, I can go in and I can adjust the parameters for free RTOS. So I could come under the configuration tab. And you can see here I've got middlewares listed. I can see my different system components I have involved. If I had connectivity or multimedia, you'd see other little blocks associated in these different areas. I can go ahead and click on free RTOS. It's going to pop up a configurator here, and I can go through and decide, you know, what tick rate do I want the RTOS to run at? Uh, what's my stacks, minimum stack size going to be? I can set the task name length. I can come in here and adjust all these different parameters, including semaphores and timers, tasks and queues. I can come in here and configure all of this by default. Uh, for now, the default settings is going to be good enough for this example. So I'm just going to accept those settings and click OK. Now I'm ready to generate the actual project code. So I'm going to come up to project and select generate code. Now, if this, if this is the first time you're going to create a project using STM32 CubeMX, you may find that after we go through this step, it's going to actually try to ask you whether it wants to download uh, the materials associated with the STM32 F4 discovery board. Uh, you're going to want to say yes and download all the different packages and components that are associated with it. In order to keep the installer lean and to, so that it doesn't take a lot of time to install, they've gone and kind of removed those and they only download the pieces that you need. That way it doesn't take as much file space as, as you know, a huge amount of file space when it's not absolutely necessary. So we can come in here. I'm going to go and uh, name my project. This time I'm going to call it RTOS Discovery. You can see here it's gone through. I can adjust my uh, minimum heap and stack size settings here if I wanted to. One thing I want to make sure I do, make sure I select the tool chain I'm going to use. I mentioned I'm using a 
Italic's True Studio for this. So I'm going to go ahead and select their project, uh, Toolchain or IDE. The rest of these settings are going to be okay for me. I've gone through and already found my project location. I could come in and also uh, adjust different settings if I wanted to. Like if I wanted full assertions to be enabled, I could come in here and select that. The tool chain would automatically set that up for me. But for this example, I'm happy with the settings here. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Now, once it's generated the code, it's going to give me the option. Do I want to stay in this tool or would I like to open the project? I would like to open the project at this time. I'm going to use my default workspace for Italic True Studio, which is the ARM Workspace 7.1. Uh, just as a hint, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but I am using the version 7.1 of Italic True Studio. But I would recommend you go out and get whatever the latest version is. Once the project loads, I'm going to come in here, expand RTOS Discovery. A couple of things you want to take a look at real quick. You can see there's a middleware folder here, third party. You can see this is where all of our free RTOS code is actually going to be located at. So here's all the generated code. Now, if we ever want to go back and make adjustments, we should jump back into STM32 Cuba Max and make those adjustments there. There are different configurations for free RTOS. You can see here, if we expand the file here, that you can see that there's uh, a free RTOS config template. Uh, there's free RTOS, uh, the normal free RTOS header here. We want to make sure that we don't go and adjust these files manually. We actually want to go into the uh, configurator and do that. You'll also find if you come under uh, include, there's the free RTOS config. This is where all of the configuration settings that we looked at from the tool that are actually generated. So if I were to enable preemption here in the tool, it was generated as a value here. If I changed the tick rate, the tick rate would have been changed here. So this is automatically generated for us and we don't want to change that manually. Now one of the things I'm going to want to do is expand the source folder here. And I'm going to want to come into my main folder. From main here, there's a couple things that I want to do. There's going to be a whole bunch of code that was already generated for us, such as pin configurations. But one thing that I want to do is I want to create a, a task, first off, to run my LEDs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a task called LED Gatekeeper. And I'm going to have it just be the minimum configuration. And I'm not going to have uh, pass any parameters to it. I'm going to set the task priority level to 2. So now one of the things I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to create this task. You can look here that there's different regions in the text that tell us where we can create different objects for our RTOS. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, in the user code area 2, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to create the task that I want. So you can see here I'm calling the API X task create. I'm going to call the LED gatekeeper. This is going to be the function that gets called when this task needs to execute. I'm providing it a name of LED gate. And then I've entered the parameters here for the task priority of 2. Now one thing you might notice here is that we don't have an LED gatekeeper function yet that would actually be called. So let's go ahead and create that now. So I'm going to paste in some example code that I created so that we can toggle the LED pins. Now you can see here that I've got a function that returns nothing. It's called LED gatekeeper. It's taking a void pointer to PV parameters. I've initialized a setting to be able to blink the LEDs. So I'm creating X delay, which is going to be equal to 500 divided by the tick period in milliseconds. And I've also created a for loop, which is necessary for our tasks to continue to execute. Free RTOS will not like it if we run to completion inside of one of our tasks. It'll cause it to crash. So we need to have some type of infinite loop to, loop to run our task. The first line here, I'm making a call into the STM32 hardware abstraction layer to write the GPIO pins. I, can, I make the call to HAL GPIO write pin. Port D is the port that had the LEDs on it. And the Cuba Max tool chain developed LD4 pin, LD3, LD5, and LD6 pin to be able to control the LEDs. So I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is uh, bitwise or these together. And then I'm going to pass in GPIO pin reset. Then I'm going to call VTask delay to delay for my period of time. Then I'm going to write to the pin and set them all high. Then delay again. So what we should get then is our LED is going to be toggling on and off. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to go through, I'm going to go to project. I'm going to build all. Now that we've successfully compiled the code, we now want to run it on our end target. So what I'm going to do is come up over to the debugging area. If I haven't set up my debugger first, I might want to come in here and click on the debugging configuration and set up my debugger. Since I've already done that, I can just go ahead and click debug here. Or if I had already done it, I can just click the bug. You'll then see the debugging process begin. Now at this point, what you can see here is that we've entered into the uh, main thread. We also have entered into main. So we're, we're just sitting here in main. We haven't started executing our code yet. 
You can see just by looking at the picture of the development board, there aren't any LEDs blinking. Now we could step through this code step by step, but all we really need to do is see if I run the code, do I see my code blinking at about a half second rate? So if I go here and click run, as you can see, the LEDs are blinking. They turn on for about half a second, turn off for half a second, and then back on and off, on and off. And now at this point, we know that we have successfully not just set up the STM32 F4 discovery board, but we've also set up our free RTOS to run a very basic task. And now at this point, I can go in and start creating my application, whatever that may happen to be.